Artober Learning Labs. Yay! On today's Learning Lab, Cheekwood will teach us all about El Dia de los Muertos. We'll learn about its history, hear a song, and make our very own shoebox altar. Hi, welcome to Cheekwood. My name is Katie and I'm a member of the education team. For over 20 years, Cheekwood has been celebrating El Dia de los Muertos. Now, if you haven't heard about this holiday, don't worry, we're about to learn more about it today. El Dia de los Muertos is celebrated in early November across Latin America and in the United States. This holiday honors those that have died and celebrates the circle of life. Altars are built, grave sites are cleared and decorated, People dance and sing alongside the ancestors that have passed. Today, we're gonna to focus on altars. We're gonna learn how they honor those that have died, as well as learning how music honors those and brings on the memories of those that have passed. Now, we're then gonna build our own mini shoebox altar that you can do at home. Joining me today are Alma and Rachel, and they're here to help us learn more about El Dia de los Muertos. What is an altar? Uh, Day of the Dead altars are also called ofrendas, offerings, uh, to, uh, constructed to adorn, remember, honor, and please the dead. Uh, altars are a central symbol of the Day of the Dead celebration. Uh, here's what you will find in an altar. The individual elements can be grouped into four categories, correspond to natural elements of nature, water, fire, earth, and wind. Uh, candles, fire burning, and also lighting the way. Papel picado, which are colorful rectangle cutouts of Day of the Dead uh, motives also uh, to decorate the altar. Fruit and food, it's earth to delight the souls. Pan de Muerto, uh, it's food offering to the spirits. Water, it's to satisfy the thirst of the dead who visit. Um, the Sempasuchil, which is the bright orange, yellowish Mexican marigold. It's also called uh, Flor de Muertos. It's the main floral adornment for grave sites and altars. Uh, the salt, it uh, helps the journey of the afterlife to eternity. And the sugar skulls symbolize uh, Mikistli, the god of dead. The photos of past loved ones to honor paying tribute to and personal items to remember them by. Uh, today I brought the picture of my grandmother and uh, one of her favorite shawls. And in the American culture, animals are also part of our families, so you can always remember them in the altar. Thank you. Hola, soy Senora Rachel. I'm Miss Rachel, and I am excited to be here to talk to you a little bit more about Dia de los Muertos. And for me, a way to celebrate is through music. Um, we are celebrating our ancestors, we are celebrating our loved ones and the memories we share with them. We can't have a celebration without music. And personally for the Rodriguez family, music is part of our family tradition. I'm a singer, my father's a singer, my tios, my uncles are singers, my brother's a great songwriter, even my children play the violin and my daughter has a fantastic voice. But it all comes from mis abuelos, my grandparents, were the ones that instill our love of music. They love to go to Mexican dances and the Tejano dances, and they love to sing around a campfire. And they shared that with their children as they traveled from South Texas to Michigan as migrant workers, whether they were camping or after a hard day of work, they would light a fire and eat together and sing music together. 
And another way that I also use music as a way to honor loved ones and people that have passed that have inspired me, creatives and other singers who have um, been my inspiration to follow my dreams and to be proud of who I am. People like Patsy Cline, since we're here in Nashville, Tennessee, and that inspired me to move to Nashville to be a singer. People like Elvis Presley, of course, the king. People like Richie Valens and Freddie Fender, who's also a Tejano. And of course, Selena, one of my biggest inspirations. But it all really comes down to my family, mis abuelos. This is my abuelo Jose y mi abuelita Guadalupe. And one of his favorite songs, my grandfather's favorite song, was Los Laureles. And whenever I would see him, whether I was in Texas visiting him at home, or if I was in Michigan, or if he came to Nashville to see me, he would always say, Mija, por favor, cántame la canción de Los Laureles. And that is, please sing me my song, Los Laureles. And the last time I saw him, I had the honor of sitting next to his bed and singing the song for him. So let me sing Los Laureles for you today. Ay, que laureles tan verdes, que rosas tan encendidas. Si piensas abandonarme, mejor quítame la vida. Alza los ojos a verme si no estás comprometido. Eres matan de algodón que vives en el capullo. Ay, qué tristeza me da cuando te llenas de orgullo de ver a mi corazón enredado con el tuyo. Eres rosa de Castilla que solo en mayo se ve. Quisiera hacerte un invite, pero en la verdad no sé. Si tienes quien te lo evite, mejor me separaré. Por ahí va la despedida, chinito por tus quereres. La perdición de los hombres son las benditas mujeres y aquí se acaban cantando los versos de los laureles. And that is how we celebrate Día de los Muertos in my family. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our small box and we are going to cover it in paper. So you can choose any colored paper you want, but we want our altars to be bright and fun. So we've gone ahead and already pre-wrapped our small altar in purple construction paper. It's added in some of our decorations. So we've already gone ahead and made some of our papel picado that we talked about earlier, along with some of our um, paper marigolds. Now you can add any decorations that you want, but we chose to go with these two. Feel free to add more yarn, more tissue paper, any other decorations that you would like to make it bright and colorful. So next we're gonna add in the pictures of our loved ones or those that we're honoring along with some of their personal items. So today we're adding in a picture, framed picture of Frida Kahlo. So to honor this artist, we are going to put in some things that represent her or that honor her. We're gonna add paintbrushes and some tubes of paint. Next, we're gonna add in some additional items that you traditionally find on an altar. These are some items that we previously talked about. We're gonna go ahead and add in our candles. 
Since we're doing a mini altar, we're going to use battery operated instead of real candles. We're also going to add in our marigolds to help guide our spirits home. And finally, we're going to add in some sweet treats to greet our spirits once they arrive. So today we're using Hershey chocolate. However, you can use any items that you would like, any food items that are special to those that you're honoring or that you would just like to add. Now this is just the beginning of our project, but feel free to add as many decorations as you would like. So we've brought out yarn, tissue paper, construction paper, bright colored tape, anything that you want in order to add to make your mini altar special. Thank you so much for joining us as we learned all about El Dia de los Muertos and what altars mean in the celebration. Join us on chiqua.org to learn more about how we celebrate here. And we hope to see you next time as we celebrate El Dia de los Muertos in person.